Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, we're gonna look at DIY hot tub heaters. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so if you're building a DIY hot tub, then you're gonna need a heater of some form. So in this video, we're gonna look at all of the different options that you have for your DIY hot tub heaters. Now, before we get going, always a good point to say, please do subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification icon to be notified when my videos go live. I put two long form videos out every week and a whole bunch of shorts as well. So there's loads of content out there and it's all focused around building DIY hot tubs and plunge pools. Okay, so the DIY hot tub heater. Well, the first thing that you need to know about these is that you're gonna need a spa pack. And every spa pack, I'll say every, but pretty much every spa pack comes as standard with an electrical heater inside. Now, whether you're gonna use that electrical heater, certainly in the current climate, it's quite expensive to do so, or not, it's gonna come with one anyway. Now, what you're not gonna do is, you're not really gonna do away with the spa pack. And the reason that you're not gonna do that is because it has a whole bunch of different features. Firstly, it allows you to control your jets, it allows you to control your blower, but more importantly, it will control the filter cycles for your hot tub, it will control the purge cycles as well. So that's basically to stop standing water in the pipes and uh, Legionnaires or Legionella developing. Uh, every so often, it will turn the jets on, put them on full, and blow anything out the pipe and it just keeps the water circulating. So the, the spa pack has a lot of roles as well as having that heater inside of it. Now, if we're not gonna use the heater, so for example, on my own hot tub, I don't use the electrical heater anymore. I use an air source heat pump, which we'll look at later on in this video. You can just disconnect that electrical heater. So it's really not a problem to have it there. You're gonna to want to leave that spa pack in, as I said, but you can just unplug the heater from the board and use an alternative source. So an option for DIY hot tub heaters is a wood burning stove. Now there's lots of these available. You see these really with the, the kind of the cedar wood uh, hot tubs that they're more popular, but I do get often asked whether it's possible to, to add a, a wood burning stove to your DIY hot tubs. Now it is, there's a, a couple of things that you need to think about. Firstly is the practicality of a wood burning stove. Normally a wood burning stove is on a hot tub that is totally off the grid. So there's no pumps, there's no filter. It's pretty much a single use tub and you heat it up like a bath, soak in it, a bit like a Japanese soaking tub, and then you empty it afterwards. Now, if you're building a, a wood burning stove for this kind of a hot tub, then it's gonna work on the basis of convection. So it's gonna draw the cold water in and the hot water's gonna go out the top and it'll create convection currents. Uh, I've done a video on uh, this kind of single use hot tub before. I'll put a link to that underneath this video. In my opinion, it's not a great way of doing things. It's difficult to control the temperature. It's so involved making a fire. It takes, well, whilst it's quicker than electric, it still takes a long time to heat up any kind of a size of tub. So really, if anything, a wood burner for me is a, a secondary heating method for your, for your DIY hot tubs. It's not really something that would use as your primary source of, of heating. A step up from the wood burning DIY hot tub heater is a coil heater. Now you might have seen these, there's loads of videos on YouTube for, for how you can do this kind of thing. It's not one of my favorites, to be honest. I've done a couple of projects. Uh, one of the case studies on buildhottub.com, uh, if you look it up, it's Francisco from Chile. He's using a coil heater. And the way that these work is you put the coil into the fire pit itself. The difference with the coil is, it's a coil of pipe that allows water to circulate round. Now in doing so, you are having the water pumped around the system. So you're drawing cold water in, you're, you're pumping it around the coil and putting hot water into the tub. Now these, in my opinion, are a little bit more efficient than just a regular wood burner. 
However, they're still pretty much involved and certainly for the, the tub I designed for Francisco, we had that as a secondary heating source. That wasn't the, the main heating source. You could use it as an extra to kind of, you know, boost the temperature and, and save a bit of money in, in the process. But again, you've got to build the fire, you've got to keep it going, you've got to have a good supply of wood. And if, if you don't, then it, you know, it can be expensive, but it's certainly time consuming. So that's definitely something to think about when you're thinking about these DIY hot tub heaters and how you're gonna incorporate them into your tubs. Anything that has fire related is labor intensive. So you've got to have lots of free time if you're gonna use this method to, to heat your hot tub. The next method is heat exchangers. Well, what's a heat exchanger? Well, basically a heat exchanger can make use of uh, another heating source. What do I mean? For example, in your home, you will have a boiler. In that boiler, it will power the radiators or your underfloor heating in your home. You're gonna heat that anyway. So what a heat exchanger can do is it can harness the heat that you're already creating with that circulation of water around your home. You circulate that same water around the, the heat exchanger and the hot tub water flows through the center of the heat exchanger. It absorbs the heat as it goes through from some clever technology inside and it heats your hot tub. The main benefit of using a heat exchanger is that you're not paying twice. So if you're already heating up your home or your hot water in your home, for example, you can make use of that to heat your tub. A couple of the downsides, you've got to be within proximity of your home with your tub. So, you know, if you've got a, a large garden and your hot tub's at one end, it's not gonna work. Secondly, it only works when your heating source is running. So for example, in the summer, the chances are it's gonna be running a lot less. So that heat exchanger will be a lot less efficient at adding heat to your hot tub. So for me, again, heat exchangers, they're a fantastic secondary method of heating your hot tubs but you're going to want to have a main source as well that you can use all year round because the last thing that I want my customers to do is have to put their hot tubs away in the winter because they can't heat them so when I design them I always make sure the DIY hot tub heaters that we have are sufficient for all year round use because for me when it's cold, when you've got all that steam coming off, it's the best time of year to have a hot tub. The last thing you want in the summer is to be sat in 40 degrees and oh, you know, 104 degree uh, water. It's not nice. So hot tubs, you want all year round heat. And for me, I definitely think the winter's best, but that's just my personal preference. Okay, next method for our DIY hot tub heaters are propane and natural gas. I kind of bundle these two together they are by far the fastest way of heating your tub. So if you're looking to decide, you know, 45 minutes before you go in that you wanna heat it up, this is the kind of heating method that you need. There's nothing else quite like it in terms of speed. It's generally a more traditional way of heating a swimming pool using a, you know, a gas or a propane heater. In this current climate, as the fuels are more expensive, you know, this is up there with, electric, but I do know that quite a few of you guys, certainly in the US, have this into your property anyway. So making use of it is a, a no brainer. It's super, super fast. You, you really wanna put the, the biggest heater that you can onto your hot tub, just so that you have that option of really quick heat up times. So something like a, a 400,000 BTU heater will, will get that up to temperature in no time at all. So gas and propane, whilst it's still you know, pretty expensive to run, it is by far the fastest way of heating up our DIY hot tubs. Okay, and now we're gonna look at the most economical DIY hot tub heater, and that is an air source heat pump. That's actually what I have on my own tub, and for me, it saved me a huge 66% in the running costs over my electric heater that I was using previously. Now, air source heat pumps come in lots of different shapes and sizes. For me, over in Europe, I like the Comfort Line range, and in the US, the Hydra Royals, and both of those are available in my online store, and I'll put a link to that underneath the video as well. Now, with an air source heat pump, the most important thing is the COP. Now, COP stands for coefficient of performance, and it basically is the number of the efficiency. So it's telling you that for every one kilowatt of 
electricity that you're putting into it, you're gonna get X amount of kilowatts out. So if it's got a COP of six, for example, in the best conditions, now I definitely say best conditions because they vary depending on the ambient temperature. So for example, if you have a COP of six at you know 15 degrees, which is I think it's mid 60s in, in Fahrenheit, I'm guessing, but, but there we go. That will give you for every one kilowatt of electricity in it will give you six kilowatts of heat out. So that's how they're efficient because what you're putting in is a lot less than what you're getting out. Look at the COP, look at the ratings, and by ratings, I mean the temperature ratings. You know, can these operate at really low temperatures? You know, can they operate down to zero degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit? You know, think about what your climate is like. You know, if you have very, very cold winters, then you're gonna need something like the Hydro Royals that are rated really low, so it will operate in those cold temperatures. So it's all about checking the stats. Of course, if you have any questions, you know, please either hit me up in the comments or indeed get in touch uh, via the website, you know, via the comments. There's loads of ways that you can uh, get hold of me. It's uh, really not that difficult. So in conclusion, DIY hot tub heaters, there's lots of different options out there for you. I've discussed most of them on this video. Really, you've got to think how you want to use it and what's going to be best for you. you know, are you worried about the running costs? Are you worried about the heat up speed? All of these things, you know, there, there isn't a, a correct answer for everybody. You've all got your own requirements, so it really have a good think about what you need. And again, as I said, if you do need any advice, please do get in touch. I'm always happy to hear from you. As always, I appreciate the view. Thanks ever so much for watching, and I will see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.